Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tatiana Show. I am Tatiana Rose, and this is the Tatiana Rose Show. I also have a lovely co-host, Josh Shigala from Voltoro. Voltoro, Josh, say hello to our lovely listeners. Hello, lovely listeners. Um, I'm back in Berlin after spending a fantastic three weeks in uh, in the States at Freedom Fest. Freedom! In uh, Las Vegas uh, with Tatiana, we, we, we both had a great time there, and, uh, and then also in uh, San Francisco, it was, it was amazing. Yes, and then we were at the blockchain event in Caesars, which had a lovely pool, also a good event, but really the pool was where it was, uh, I think our best times during this, this blockchain bonanza were spent at the pool. Um, Josh, yeah. uh, did you like your first time at Freedom Fest? Your first time in Las Vegas, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean Las Vegas. Wow, what a, what a, uh, it's it's really it is the epitome of bread and circuses. You 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 know you're totally encompassed in this in this fake world, and uh, of course daylight and nighttime isn't a thing. It's just it's just sort of there, there's parts of Vegas where you're you're inside somewhere with a fake blue sky above you. So you still think it's daylight, and so you get very confused. And actually, the uh, the horrific uh, attacks uh, on uh, on the people of, of demonstrating in France for Bastille Day with uh, I, I didn't even know about it. You know, I, I was in this land of bread and circuses with ball games on every like a million monitors, and somehow didn't even manage to capture a, a massive incident in world politics. Or, or whatever uh, you want to categorize it, um, because, you know, it's it's stunning to see so so much distraction, so much so much just yeah, so really circuses, um, yeah. Uh, but but uh, uh, amazing time at Freedom Fest. A really great bunch of people um, <clears throat> had uh, had some very very interesting conversations. You had to uh, you had to get through the forest of some Trump supporters to get to the to the to the uh, to the gold of the, the the anarchists through the forest through the Trump forest. So, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't think that there were very many Trump people there. Um, I also I had a good time over at Caesars again. Um, I don't want to make it only about Freedom Fest because there were a lot of really good speakers and I got to see a lot of my friends. I had suggested a lot of the speakers and one of the people. Um, that and this has been retweeted a bunch of times was that they had a really nice diverse group of people that were speaking and it wasn't just you know all old white guy, white guys so that was kind of cool and also very good speakers um, and then D10E which was in San Francisco Josh and I we flew up on the 19th right after the blockchain event to D10E and then there was um, it was a one day event uh, that ended up at some place somewhere with with uh, Judd Weiss taking photos of us all making us beautiful so that was always really fun and yeah. uh, good good organization so after that Josh stayed behind in broke my wrist San Francisco so he could break his wrist because he wanted yeah. to show he was very athletic and clearly <laughs> failed <laughs> um, no, never try a one wheeled skateboard without a helmet or after having a couple of drinks <laughs> oh yeah and that too yeah that's true. Um, <laughs> And so then I came back to New York where there were two more conferences. This was a conference bonanza this month. Um, we had the Digital Rights Tech Summit, which was put on by this guy, Ned, <laughs> that I know. And I was invited, but there were a lot of really cool people, and there was a lot of talk about blockchain, so that was really exciting and interesting. Um, Laurie Lock, Jaber Publishing blockchain. told me about it. Um, or public, uh, Anyway. Um, and then there was uh, the American Banker event, which... You know, I'm not like all about helping the bankers or anything, but I was. I thought that it was uh, had a lot of really interesting, great attendees and a lot of good speakers. Um, the after conversation is always where the truth comes out, and everybody feels really optimistic about blockchain, Bitcoin, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it was good hanging out. I want to call it Bitcoin. What do you want to call it? Bitcoin? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm on that team too, but we're not picking teams today. Um, <laughs> we are, however. Uh, bringing on our first guest, Derek Jay, who's a good friend of mine from the Liberty Movement. I've known him for a very long time. He's with Flaming Freedom and a whole bunch of other things. I was just watching his movie that he made, which is Derek Jay's Victimless Crime Spree. 
um, which isn't the newest movie, but is still relevant. And what I love about Derek J is that even though he's got real big balls and he's a hardcore activist, he always does it with a smile on his face and always looking really nice. And he's not a pushover, but he really has this lovely way about him that makes you want to join him. It's not in your face angry activism. It's really inspiring and fun. And welcome to the show, Derek. I'm really glad to have you on today. Thank you so much, Tatiana and Josh. It's great to be here. You know, life is fun, and it's it's here for a living. So I'm I'm here to have fun, and you know, I don't mind these uh, these governments. They're just a bump in the road. We're we're gonna get gut right over them and uh, live our lives freely. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, especially, you know, now that things seem like, you know, the news is really blasting that things are falling apart. But the way that they're blasting it is saying. This side is bad, but really the facade is falling. <laughs> you have to just sit back and laugh, um, and and also work toward building new solutions uh, without dependency on the government. Well, one of the radio shows that I do called Freedom Fiends, we say we we like to laugh while Western civilization collapses, and that's really what's happening. I mean, if you if you can't laugh about it, um, then you're gonna have a bad time. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, and yeah, at the end of the day, really, it's it's a very important thing, uh, humor. It's it's really one of the things that allows us to cope with um, horrific incidents and 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 heartache. Is to step back and 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 look on the bright side, look at the look at the humor of it, and and it's uh, it's something that that sometimes some people find it hard. You know, there's the, the there's the old too soon sort of uh, thing with some humor, but you know, sometimes it can't can't be too soon to laugh. So, Derek, for the people at home that don't know who you are, and uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of background, how you ended up in the crazy activist world, the community known as the Free State Project up in New Hampshire. Yeah, I moved to New Hampshire in 2011 as part of the Free State Project, which is an idea to get 20,000 liberty-loving people all to the same geographic location, and then question mark. We don't know what. You know, maybe freedom? Well, we got to figure that out. So it's a cool experiment, um, you know, for starting a new society based on the principles of self-ownership, based on non-aggression, and being a good neighbor, and then just being a model for others so that they can see what works, what doesn't, and um, give people an opportunity to really live free and take the consequences. So that I did that in 2011. And I lived a little too free. I, I, um, I ended up getting arrested several times. I made this movie, uh, Victimless Crime Spree. It's free on YouTube. You can get it at victimlesscrimespree.com and see what happens when, you know, you have a dance party in the middle of the park or um, smoke a joint out in front of a bunch of cops. Like, you know, these are things I think that people should be free to do. But if you do them today, there um, are going to be people who are going to try and hurt you. And... You know, I could be sad about it, and you know, I did go to jail for my so-called crimes. But I decided, you know, you how just long gotta, were you in for? Um, all total, just sixty days. I was sentenced to five hundred and forty some days, I think. Um, but then it seems like a good use of to, tax dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You uh, seem very dangerous. For, yeah, they gotta keep me away. Well, they they do this. It's like. People who have been arrested, even for like a victimless crime or a, a, you know something small, um, they probably know that the way the courts typically operate is they threaten you with like a, a serious amount of, of time. Like I was actually facing ten years. Um, oh wow! Just for for five crimes involving zero victims. So then I I pled, I did a plea deal where it's like, okay, I'm guilty. You know, I'll take the I'll take whatever you you give me, you know, 40 lashes, and um, they they ended up reducing the the sentence because I'm willing to um, opt out of of their game, where you know I make them go to court and prove all the elements of the case and everything. Because I, I I I'm not gonna say I'm not guilty. I clearly did these things. I recorded it. It's on video. Yeah. Um, so I wasted time to deny it, but I still don't think they're crimes, you know. And that's really the message that I want to convey is that if you're not hurting anyone, if you're just living your life and uh, involved in voluntary interactions, like maybe you hire a prostitute, you know, um, maybe you're two consenting adults, you want to pay uh, a dominatrix, and that's your business. You should be free to do that. 
You know, no one should get in between you and and that. You know, where it come, gets to be a problem, and I think we could all draw this distinction, is when it's like uh, sex slavery or something, where like there's coercion involved and it's not voluntary. But what I'm talking about is a world where everyone can do whatever they want as long as they are doing it without hurting anyone. Well, it's so, almost uh, it's almost the opposite of sex slavery when it's when prostitutes are legal. It's like it's like slavery uh, to force you not to have sex <laughs> because <you're, laughs> because the slavers say no, you're not allowed. I'm going to throw you in prison for doing yeah, so. Anti-sex slaves. Yeah, yeah. So oh, um, yeah, I mean, two 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 consenting adults um, who you know decide for whatever reason that's important to. Uh, Feel the contact of human uh, and someone, and the other side uh, give that. And I, actually, I, I knew a parents, some parents of, uh, a, 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 and their son was um, quite heavily. Uh, I don't know what the P, uh, PC word for it is these days. It constantly changes, but screw it. Uh, quite heavily retarded. And well, um, mentally challenged, I think, is what they say. Yeah, but not only mentally, he had physically challenged as well, mm. and um, and they, uh, you know, they took a while to find him a prostitute that would, um, you know, satisfy his needs uh, uh, as as a as a normal human man, and um, yeah, and it was really it was a lovely story to hear. Uh, it was really really nice, and and you know, it really gave a lot to his life. Yeah, that is heartwarming. Yeah. Frankly, I, I love to hear that um, you know someone's needs are, are being met. You know, especially someone who who would have a hard time with that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's good news. That's that's yeah. the kind of world I want to live in. And I, I think there's going to be more of that. People are seeing like you know there's no reason to 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 make these things um, crimes. I think it's a long layover from like the Puritan days, you know, and it's ending. It's there's. You know, more and more places are, are embracing the ideas of uh, of freedom. They can't yeah. get a can't get a cut of it either. You know, it's it's harder for governments to you know, like oh, we're going to tax prostitution in in Nevada. You know, sure, like the prostitutes are really going to keep <laughs> really close records of their taxes and send you a cut, Mister Bureaucrat. Like, go home. You know, there's no need for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my point of my movie. You know, uh, I think it's approachable for anyone. Victimless crime spree is for someone who um, is a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent or an anarchist. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Everyone loves freedom and needs to experience it in their lives today. And maybe you're holding back in the ways you want to be free. Maybe you want to start a garden and your home association neighborhood watch people won't let you. Just do it. <laughs> See what the consequences are. If you're not hurting anyone, I mean, don't violate contracts. That's probably not good. No, no, no. But well, I mean, do you think that everybody else is willing to go to jail to to do that to to start their garden? I mean, I think that one of the the main messages here is that these things are really ridiculous, and there's something to be said from from the civil disobedience of just breaking the law. But um. I don't know if everybody's going to be on our side if they start going no. to jail for it. <laughs> I think young guys could do that. Like me when I was 21, like I wouldn't do this today. I'm 27 now. And so, you're you know, all washed up. Yeah, like when, when you're <laughs> when you're a young like got to go get them and and make my way in the world, like that's it's that's the time to go that's and right. go do that stuff. So, yeah, I, and there's always a new crop of them coming up, right? Like so if you're listening to this and you're um just coming out of high school and you're saying, maybe I don't need to go to college. You're probably right. So <laughs> why don't you go find a new way um, to make your life awesome? Um, you know, I was talking to someone the other day about self-ownership, as you brought that up earlier. And, and, and because I, I feel that especially freedom and especially us, uh, uh, people in the uh, voluntarist camp, uh, as I, I would say, would would say that uh, coming from first principles, meaning uh, looking at it from a philosophical or scientific viewpoint, uh, you need a, somewhere to start, right, for, with freedom in terms of explaining it philosophically to say, do you, you know, as, as, a, as a first question is, do you own yourself? And I've had, I've had conversations with people who really find that a hard question to answer. It, it's so strange. They even sit there pondering, well... You know, I don't, and, and 
uh, it's quite amazing watching them jumping through hoops in their own head to try and explain that they don't own themselves and at the same time that they're not slaves. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to use your mouth to articulate a point that is your own if you don't own yourself. I can't imagine how that would actually work. <laughs> Beautifully said. Beautifully yeah. said. Um, but it is a challenging question. I find myself grappling with it still because what does it mean to own yourself and when does that happen? Like, is it the magic number 18? Like, oh, wow, you know, now you're an adult. You had a birthday. Now, the day before, you didn't own yourself, and now you right. do. Right. It's really like more of a, it, do you take action to own yourself? And it doesn't matter. If you're like some 65-year-old guy, um, never worked a day in his life, still living off of his, in his parents' basement, yeah. I don't think you own yourself. I think yeah. they still own you. Like, you never huh. took action to... To put a roof over your own head, to put your own food on the table, you know, to to bring value to your neighborhood, to your to your world, like that's how you really own yourself. It's a verb, you know. It's not a descriptor. It's not an adjective. Like oh, self ownership. It's it's something you do. Interesting. Great way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Because it is a it is a tricky question when it comes down to when, right? <laughs> that's uh, yeah. It's fascinating. That's yeah. that's. Yeah, I would I would agree with you that especially, yeah, when you when you do live under your parents' roof uh, and they are, you know, supplying everything and you, you're you're not really you haven't flown from the nest, so to well, say. It's, it's like yeah. there are a million baby steps that we take towards total human liberation for ourselves. And like part of that is when we're kids and we learn to moderate our eating. Like, okay, I've got all the cabinets at my disposal and the refrigerator. Mm. Am I gonna eat it all? Like maybe, and I'll get sick, and I'll take the consequences, and I'll learn from that, and then make better choices. Um, but experimenting with freedom is—that's what makes me feel alive. So you yeah. know, I, I want that for others. I want them to. Um, have the opportunities to experiment with freedom. And I think a lot of people are, are deprived of that. So I, I want to break that open. And that's part of what I love doing here in New Hampshire. Like I'm um, breaking down walls for the gay community in a group called the Pink Pistols. And we shoot every month. We go to um, a different shooting range around the state so that it's easy for people to meet up. And we train gay people on how to defend themselves with firearms. And then we tell people that we're doing this mm. so that we, the public knows that, hey, the gay people in New Hampshire, you probably don't want to pick on them because they are armed. Yeah, where did this come from? This came from a, a very sad story in Wyoming in the early 2000s when a young man named Matthew Shepard was taken from a bar and beaten to death and left to die uh, tied to a pole out in the, um, the, the wasteland there. And very sad, but uh, from that came many more uh, positive stories of gay people who learned from this, saw uh, Matthew's suffering, and took it upon themselves to take personal responsibility for their defense, for their um, for their own lives. It doesn't have to be like go out and buy a gun. It's maybe you learn martial arts, maybe you carry a pepper spray or a knife. What are, you do what you think is best for you and your life. The point is you got to take personal responsibility. Not rely on the police, not rely on some, you know, bartender. No one's there, to, you know, hopefully people are going to look out for you and save you and we're all looking out for each other. But yeah. it's not yeah. morally okay. In my view, it's not morally valid to put my life in someone else's hands. That's not okay. I can't, I can't say, hey, cop, it's your job. You're supposed to look out for me. I never contracted with that cop. It's mm -hmm. not his job to look out for me. And, you know, frankly, he won't. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's not, it's not about efficiency. I think it's about morality. You know, it, even if it were um, more efficient for, for people to look after me, it's just still not right for me to impose on someone else the uh, my protection. That's my personal responsibility. It's everyone's personal responsibility. So, so Derek, Derek, Derek um, um, where, where is this, is this? Uh, basically airing? Uh, I'm sorry, there was a weird echo and it really threw me off. Um, who else is doing it? Is it just people in New Hampshire? 
oh, there are Pink Pistols groups all over the country and I think even the world, um, but New Hampshire has its own. We've got about 90 members in our Facebook group. Anyone is welcome to join. I've got a link to the Pink Pistols group on my website, which is thederekj.com. So it's very easy to find uh, if anyone wants to you know, watch my movie or join Pink Pistols or any of the things that I talk about. It's all there. Um, and even if you just visit New Hampshire, I, you know, I would love anyone who's listening to this, if you're thinking about visiting New Hampshire, maybe you've never shot a gun before, perfect. Come join the Pink Pistols group, send me a message, and say you want to learn how to shoot and, and go out shooting with us. I'd be happy to take you out. And, um, you know, there's so much empowerment that comes with... I mean, you've, you've shot guns, right? Has, has everyone here shot before? Yeah, I thought it was a scary experience, but I thought it was a good thing to do, but it was very disturbing. I'm not a fan of guns. But I think that, I mean, I'm a huge Second Amendment, you know, yay guns. I want one, but I don't, I don't have one yet. Really? Don't we show up at my house. Well, I'm getting that... one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no. Every, anyone listening to this, Tatiana has a, a huge cache of guns at her house. Yes. <laughs> She's ready to blow Not your head. I'm extremely stuff. well trained. Yeah. Um, Personal wrestler is available in my closets for invaders. <laughs> no, really. What was it? What was scary about it for you? Because I I can relate. My first time shooting, I I sat there trying to pull the trigger for like, what it felt like five minutes, just constantly pulling back, just slow, slow, slow. I'm terrified it was going to just like bash and hit me in the face or something, you know? Were you, I, was what worried, you I was worried that it would hit me in the face, but also I just, I felt like it was, while I understand it's an instrument of protection, it's basically an instrument of death, right? Um, oh, yeah. It's something to, and, and I mean, that's that's a lot of weight, you know, you can't just even if I'm not like on the receiving end or the giving end of that, at the end of the day, like these types of things have been used to kill and end ruin lives all around the world. So I thought it was, you know, I want one. I'd rather have a gun than not have one. But I wasn't like, oh man, I feel like Rambo. Go kill some people. <laughs> that did not really occur to me. No, and that's really good to have respect for uh, for a weapon of of violence, uh, for for a tool of violence, for a tool that potentially can uh, kill someone. I The first time I went shooting was uh, with a friend in Sydney who went to a, a shooting range. He was a, a, a rifle shooting range. And, and it was quite amazing because I, I thought, oh, I've got to come with because I've never shot a gun in Australia. It's really not uh, that prevalent anymore. Um, and I was imagining I'd go there and there'd be all these army freaks like, yeah, guns! you know, really into it, hardcore sort of types. And I get there, and it's little old ladies and little old men with their rifles, you know, without a scope even, just looking through amazing shots, could shoot, uh, you know, and then there's all some younger people with all the equipment and all the, you know, high-tech stuff so, uh, to get it right uh, on the bullseye. But it was quite amazing, the, the, the types. So I was talking to some of these older gentlemen who was like who were like yeah well when I was growing up I'd bring a rifle with me to school uh, on the school bus and stick it up on top of the thing and, and sit down and no one would blink an eye um, it's changed so much and uh, and and it really uh, it really took the whole stereotype uh, and and threw it out the window for me yeah what that's the other culture around here in New Hampshire people walk around with guns all the time nobody blinks I went and got my nails done in a pedicure and had a gun on my hip. They didn't even mention it. Oh, really? Wow. Wow. Um, I remember my mom and I were at some, I don't know, like Dominican Republic or something, and there was a shooting thing. And my mom went up, and she was really, really good shot. And I remember thinking to myself, that was so strange, but I guess back in old Poland, you know, they had guns, and they knew how to shoot. She was really good. Cool. Uh, yeah, it was, I was kind of like, wow, my mom's a badass. <laughs> um, I didn't really take after her yet, but I actually have really wanted to do some sort of classes or something because apparently you can't just go once or twice. You have to keep doing it in order to be good at it. Um, and, you know, with all the travel that I do, it makes it a little bit tricky, but 
I don't know. Maybe when I come up to New Hampshire, I'll, I'll go out with the uh, Pink Pistols guys. It's not just for gay dudes, right? Everybody can come. Uh, everyone's welcome. And, you know, I've thrown the word gay out. I, another show I do uh, every Thursday night on LRN.FM is called Flaming Freedom. And it used to be a gay liberty podcast. And, like, it still kind of is. It's mostly gay dudes who do it. But we've thrown out the word gay altogether. And we're just calling it sexual diversity. Just can we all yeah. be done with this gay straight by all this baloney? Yeah. And just call it sexual diversity and be done with it? Yeah, so it's for everyone, Tatiana. Anyone who wants to come who's sexually diverse. Ha <laughs> ha. And, uh, you know, th this actually stems into a conversation that's, you know, is constantly thrown at the gay community uh, about gay marriage. And, uh, I, you know, for me, it's been this, this thing where it's like, look, I, I understand where you're coming from with wanting to be uh, equal with everyone else, but let's not be equal slaves. What, what, what's... <laughs> What's the government doing handing out love licenses anyway? Whether you're gay, straight, whatever you are, what, what's the deal there? Why even, why even uh, follow that trend? H how do you feel about that topic? Um, I only, I, I don't need a marriage license from the government. I would request a BIPCOT no-gov license. And this is a, an idea for a license that could be used on all media, software, and, and different products, um, including shows like this, where if you license it with the BIPCOT no-gov license at BIPCOT.org, then it is free to use and reuse for anyone except government agents. And if government <laughs> agents use it, then they consent. It's right in the, the license. Then they consent to being ridiculed and mocked on, on the Internet. So <laughs> I love the punishment. Yeah, that's how it's enforced. You know, we don't use government guns. So if I had a license, I would use a BIPCOT no-gov marriage license. Right. Nice. Very nice. Hmm. I don't know anything about that, but... Um, okay. Well, you just learned something. <laughs> I maybe. guess now I know. <laughs> yeah, maybe... So people can check it out. How did you hear about this thing? Oh, um, a, a cool hard rocker named Michael Dean, he's uh, one of the hosts of the Freedom Fiends, invented the idea with a, another programmer because they developed some really cool software um, and he does a radio show and so they BIPCOT no-gov licensed it like, hey, you know, what if the government tries to say, oh, uh, you said this or whatever on your radio show and he says, uh, 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 but you're not allowed to listen to that, so... You know, would this stand up in court if you banned government agents from using your stuff? So I actually fly a Bipcot flag at my house, so no government agents are allowed inside. Sorry. <laughs> I'm breaking the How license. How long have you been doing this? <laughs> for like a year or two. Uh, you know, I made it a joke. I've got a flag over here for like Fiendfest Somalia. So the Bipcot license, it kind of looks like this. It's, a, uh, it's like a teeth. An angry dragon mouth. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it's it's a thing. It's just a joke thing, you know. For like people who we're done with government, and we're gonna just make fun of it. The last thing, speaking of being done with government, I know um, my time is is running short. I, I want to mention a group called NH Exit. You guys probably heard about Brexit. Oh, is this like a secession movement? Yeah, yeah. Of New Hampshire. <laughs> For New Hampshire independence has been around for years. That's already a thing. But then with the momentum of Brexit, people are like, all right, let's do this. Let's get out of here. I don't need to be a part of this torture squad. You know, they, they, we send them their, our money. They make us poor. They, they give us the drug war. I don't need this. I'm, I'm out. And so I've been doing activism every uh, couple of weeks. People from all over the state are holding events where, you know, we hold signs, wave flags, and talk to the people who are walking by. Like, what do you think about the idea of leaving the federal government? What do you think about New Hampshire secession or independence? You know, what would that look like to you, and how would you benefit from that? And there's a, a lot of people who I, I think find that idea attractive. They know that it's not in their best interest to be a part of the empire and that they would be wealthier and healthier without it. Yeah, absolutely, because we're play paying for the big the big bully on the block. He's eating from everybody's kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> interesting. I like that people well, are into it. You know, I think maybe with what's happening with the elections right now, it's hilarious. Actually, what's happening with the elections, I love it all burning to the ground. So maybe people are a little bit more open-minded to it. Yeah, we're like, hey, look at the choices that you're given. I mean, if that's not 
evidence enough that this the, the game is over. There's no there's no room for intelligent people to participate anymore. So just get out of it. Don't well, be part of it. I actually um, saw something the other day. It was kind of uh, you know it really highlighted that situation, and it was a picture of Stalin and a picture of Hitler, and it said, "Democracy, you get the choice." at least one of these people are going to get in to power <laughs> because you've got the choice of Stalin and Hitler. And, and that's the thing. You think you have a choice, but really you have a choice of two total megalomaniac power freaks um, who really don't have much humility at all, uh, who then want to sit there and, uh, and live off and tell everybody else how to live their lives um, and not really have any market feedback at all so it's um yeah it was it really highlighted to me uh yeah the, the the ludicrousness of having this choice where you get to choose which jailer jails you yeah yeah great point well fortunately you know there are things moving in the right direction in some places like new hampshire um, where people, I think, don't focus on national politics, they focus on local politics, which is where you really have more of an influence anyway. You know, but Obama or, you know, a President Trump, uh, they may want to throw me in a cage, but it's going to be the, the goon down the street who actually does it. So, you know, I want to know them and have relationships with the, the people in, in my community. And I think everyone can do that and enhance their freedom that way. Excellent yeah. point. I, on that point, I think uh, just before we close up on that, I, I, you know, I was listening as in the states, listening to a lot of talk radio and just try to feeling out what 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 it's all about, uh, where the where the zeitgeist is uh, in the conversation. And terrorism. Yeah, it was terrorism, and of course, the Black Lives Matter movement was uh, was uh, massive, and it and it you know it it they do matter. Um, all lives matter, and and I think. What, what I saw there was that um, uh, you, you really have this, uh, uh, this uh, amazing push of, of, uh, of, of people understanding that they need to stand up for themselves and not... Um, I actually forgot the train of thought. <laughs> well, I, I, okay, well, that was great. <laughs> I, I want to finish you, that thought for you with an Albert Camus quote, and this will be the last from me. Albert Camus said, the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. Beautiful. I love it. I love nice. it. That's very, very... Cool. Awesome. Oh. All right. Well, Derek, why don't you give us your, uh, your links where people can connect, and we're going to bring on our next guest in just a minute. Find more from me every day, every week at TheDerekJ.com. Thanks, Tatiana. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Thanks see you Derek. later, Derek. Hope to see you soon. Um, our next guest is Michelle Ray, known as Golf's Girl on Twitter. She is doing all sorts of interesting stuff. Um, she calls herself a political pundit, which I'm like, what's a political pundit? I mean, I kind of know, but still. Um, she's also been working on a really cool project called Clear Voter, which uh, my friend Rosalie introduced me to, and that's been underway for a while. If we're talking about, you know, the whole election process, um, Michelle, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you doing? Thank you guys for having me. I'm good. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's been a really long time. Michelle and I were together at the um, Libertarian National Convention, which was quite an exciting time. Uh, we spent some time in. Uh, off-site in a secret location, um, but also at the at the conference itself. So uh, we also did a panel together because my panel partner was not able to make it, and then Michelle jumped in, and she was really great. Uh, I think people really enjoyed it. It was sort of like a conversation about Bitcoin 101, which surprisingly has taken a minute to get – 